I want to share a bunch of little random lessons and things that I wish I had known before I became a solutions architect because hindsight is interesting. And even though I might have read these lessons from people I followed online or maybe I have read them in books, we often don't learn the lessons until we actually go through the experiences ourselves. You will listen to some of these lessons and be like, yeah, of course, that's obvious. But until you actually implement that lesson, it's going to keep showing up. Okay, I'm gonna jump right into it. My name is Elias, I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. Number four, your self-worth has nothing to do with your career success. And vice versa, by the way, your career success, it should not determine your self-worth. We're currently going through a tough era of layoffs. And if you feel good about yourself, then yes, that's going to make it easier for you to weather the storm. But if you got laid off, if you got demoted, if you're having a bad month or, or a bad year, you know, this shouldn't define how you feel about yourself. And I know <laughs> this, this can be really hard when you put so much time and effort and, and so much of yourself into your career, but your career is not an extension of yourself. And just because you're having a bad year career-wise, it actually shouldn't make you any less of an epic human being than if you were having a good year. Remember, you are the most important resource in your profession, in your business. Not money, not your certifications, not your LinkedIn profile, you. And unfortunately, many professionals put themselves last. They live in this constant state of stress. They prioritize work over healthy eating and exercise. They prioritize everybody else around them over themselves. And they burn out after all of this. The thing is, when you don't have energy, you can't show up well for your clients. You can't show up well for your team or for anybody else. If you are burned out, you can't have the clarity to think out solution end to end. So prioritizing that self-care is very, very important. And I know, trust me, I know it sounds so fluffy, like yes, self-care, but you really need to and you need to find what works specifically for you. For me, for example, one of the things that I always prioritize is my gym time. I know I feel good after a gym session and I actually get a ton of my ideas from when I'm pushing something heavy or running or on a bike for a long time, for example. They just pop up uh, when I'm not thinking about work, when I'm not at my desk frantically typing away. I also feel best and that means I can show up for my team, I can show up for my students, I can show up for my clients. Number five, there are no shortcuts, there are no hacks, there are no magic pills. There's nothing like that. If it was quick and easy, if there was shortcuts, everybody would be doing them and then they wouldn't work anymore. The people who succeed in the long term are actually the ones who put in the reps. In the book, Atomic Habits, there's this analogy about putting in the reps. You know, you go to the gym every day, you put the reps in and that's how you get fit, that's how you build muscle, that's how you reach your goals. In our domain, that means you keep solving problems, you keep studying for certifications, you keep reading books, learning from your peers, learning from your mistakes and, and giving these videos a like if you haven't already. It shows me your support and it allows me to serve you better. Number six, you can't plan your way to success. No matter how scary it feels, the only way to overcome the fears and the doubts is to take action. You're never going to plan your way through the fears and the doubts. And unfortunately, we can think, I'm not confident in my ability to transition to this role. I'm going to wait until I feel more confident. I'm not ready. I don't know enough yet. So I'm just going to wait until I know enough yet. And a lot of time, the only way to feel confident, the only way to learn enough is to do the thing before you feel ready. I'm very comfortable now doing a presentation, talking to a team of engineers, leading a workshop in person or speaking on stage or doing a virtual class for my SA Magic students, for example, because I've been doing them a lot. Uh, but I can guarantee you the first time that I have did these things, it was terrible, I promise you. It felt uncomfortable, but I would never have built the confidence to do them had I not done them. You know, I'm, I'm not 
extroverted at all. Like, put me in a room at a networking event and my natural instinct is to go stand next to the food table. That's, that, that's where you'll find me. But when it's time to communicate a solution or run a meeting with stakeholders or lead a presentation, yeah, just give me a microphone and I can just drop bombs because these are things that I have become comfortable with. So you build that confidence by doing it. Because when you do it, you get this little feedback. Huh, I didn't die. This wasn't so bad. Maybe I can do it again. And then you do it again. And then you get a little bit of more feedback. Huh, I did it again. And I didn't die this time either. And then maybe at some point, somebody tells you, hey, I learned something from you. So you get another bit of feedback like, huh, this is actually making difference to people. So you do it again. And that's how you build that confidence. You don't sit there waiting to feel more confident or absorbing tips on how to feel confident and saving all these motivational quotes to your Pinterest board or whatever. You know, you just have to take actions. But I'll say this, if you usually don't succeed at things the first time, you maybe don't wanna be jumping from airplanes alone. No, not funny. Okay. You know that legacy application full of anti-patterns everyone keeps complaining about in your company? You go ahead and you start studying it. Maybe build a proposal around how to make it better. Present it to your teammates, present it to your leads and show them that you have what it takes to design a better solution around it. You don't know where to start? Check out the Solutions Architect document series. I'll put a link, you'll also have a link in the description. We have four videos that show you the way from beginning to end. And I also share a document template that you can download and you can use. You just have to start taking action. That's really it. That's it for today's episode. This actually went a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I think I have a lot to say about these things. Hopefully, even if you only take one uh, out of the lessons of this episode, hopefully you can apply them to your career, you apply them to your life and save yourself from making the same mistakes that I made. If you have also any friends who you think would benefit from listening to this episode and applying some of these uh, lessons, please hit the share button, share it with them. It's how I get to help more people. And if you haven't taken the time to give the video a like, please know that it means a lot to me because I do spend a lot of my time talking uh, into this microphone and into this camera. And it's always nice to know that somebody is watching and, and that these videos are making a difference. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you next time. Peace out. avec la petite carotte. Ah, merci. Ah, merci. Bon, en toute petite cuite. C'est pour l'hiver aussi, là. Quoi, c'est ça? Ils ont servi les bois, ils sont fous.